Good morning, sports fans. You're in the cheap seats. We are located at Lincoln Christian Village, just fine Saturday morning. In studio with us today, we have the voice of Railer football, Bobby Verderber. Good morning. Good morning. And the uh, director of Independent Living Sources, Julie King. Good morning, Good morning, everybody. Now, off air, we've had several conversations between the two of you, so now yeah. we need to... We need to regroup put it on the and air put now? it on the air because it okay. was very interesting. Some history and a lot of a lot of good uh, information out there. But uh, first, you're the you're the director of independent living here at uh -huh. uh, Christian Village. Uh, right. Explain to the listeners exactly what you do and what that is, what you offer oh, for sure. the sure. residents. Well, in our independent living, we have uh, 64 apartments. There's three different ways that you can live with us here at the village. We have duplexes, which are 1,570 square feet. Two bedrooms, attached garage, beautiful ranch style duplexes. Then we have our cottages, which are one and two bedroom, don't have the attached garages. And then we also have our senior apartments, what most people in Lincoln refer to as the congregate building. And it's a two-story apartment building. Uh, it has uh, 26 apartments, one bedroom, primarily. We have three little studios in there that are real nice. But most of them are a one bedroom. It has a nice size living room, galley kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, and a huge bank of closets that starts. And let me tell you, women care about closets, just so you know. Oh, absolutely. Starts at the kitchen, runs all the way down the hallway, through the hallway, and into the bedroom. So there's plenty of storage space. Speaking of closets, I have a closet, and I have about a foot you know huh? sure a foot of sure. it my wife has the rest so when, yeah, they, when i tour do. when i tour couples at the duplexes i always tell them in the master suite i said and we have hers and hers closets <laughs> and then the <laughs> second bedroom you know one little corner of it the guys can put they their can put their two, two shirts <laughs> yeah the three shirts you've been wearing since <laughs> right. high school yeah with a hole yeah, in it yeah <laughs> that's yeah. all i need i know. agree with that one comedian that says men's clothing should have expiration dates on them <laughs> just that's like right. do not wear this again <laughs> but uh, that doesn't happen very no. often. You should take a sack of your clothes up to Goodwill at least once a year. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I that think so. That's a good idea. Yeah. Can't put the husband in the sack, just the clothes. <laughs> just the clothes. <laughs> just yeah. the clothes. Now, you were talking about something going on across the street. Uh, explain a little bit about that. Yeah, we've got uh, just a couple of apartments that are open in the congregate building. And so yeah. we decided to offer a special. We've never done this before, so we're in treading in new water, as they say. Um, we're going to offer uh, a get in under the roof before the snow flies special. And anybody that uh, um, comes to live with us in the next three months will get two months of what we call the deluxe package. And that's housekeeping, laundry, and three meals a day for oh, free. For free. And our meals are breakfast cooked to order. So you can have eggs over easy, Ham, sausage, bacon, biscuits and gravy, pancakes, all of the above, because we'll, if that's how you eat your breakfast, you can get it all. Oh, man. Lunch is a big sit-down affair, two entrees, two to three vegetables, dessert, beverages, full salad bar, and then your evening meals, just a little bit lighter, you know, soup and sandwich right. kind of thing. And then the beverage bar is open 24 hours a day to anybody that lives on the campus. So it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah. it really is. And uh, if someone's interested in doing this, who would they contact and what number would they contact? That would be me. All right. Yeah. And your and number is? 732-5013 is my direct line. Direct line to mm -hmm. get you. And that you can set them up with all that good stuff. Two months free and yeah. of the, uh, of deluxe, the deluxe package. package. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a good deal. You want to come live with us? Are you 60 yet? You're not 60 uh, no. yet. No. Well, this guy here to my left is getting ready to have a <laughs> yeah, birthday. Yeah, two weeks, I'll be 65. He'll be 65. Oh, so see there? Yeah. Julie, there this go. room's got a lot of karma in it. I notice on the chalkboard here, I like the saying there, remember when the sun goes down on you, the stars will come out. That's right. I bet the, ki uh, the, uh, the kids. The kids they, that live here, yeah. Yeah, I bet they have a lot of fun in here. I bet you just have some natural piano players. And we do. We do. And I will tell you, just for anybody that's not aware of research that goes on, for folks that have dementia of any kind, mostly of the Alzheimer's type, music's one of the last things to go. So if they, the short-term memory is gone, you can sing a song to them, and they can almost sing every word to you, word by word, mm -hmm. or at least get the tune back to you. 
And, and that takes them back to a place in time, a happy place in absolutely, their lives. Absolutely, absolutely. And as I said, I learn from the folks that live here. I learn something new every day from someone that lives here because they bring their history with them, their past, their experiences. There are no two people alike. They might have all come from the same town and gone to the same school, but because they lived separate lives at home, they have different experiences that they bring to the table. And I am a richer person because of yeah. working here. Where did you originally come from? I came from a little town south of Springfield, just outside of St. Louis, called St. Jacob, Illinois. Okay, I've heard of that. Yeah, a little bit. If you sneeze, you close your eyes, it's gone. <laughs> We've got a lot of towns like that around here. It, yeah, if you were <laughs> comparably, it would be like Broadwell or, or uh, Elkhart. Okay. Yeah, little bitty town. St. Jacob. St. Jacob. We had a huh. great basketball team, though. Uh, yeah, that's as where I, I kind of. Yeah, and I don't know what St. Jacob became a saint for, but. Uh, he must have done something good. He must have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe he's responsible for bacon. <laughs> good. Oh, God bless him. Yeah, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. Sure. Right? Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, you were talking off air. You, you were wanting to talk some fishing or fishing. hunting or yeah, something. You guys, we talk basketball, baseball. We've talked tennis on this show. We talk football on this. We never talk fishing and, that is and there's a lot of women out there that fish well let's talk yes. fishing all right what do you like to fish for i like fishing for panfish although we have a cabin up in in um, northern minnesota park rapids minnesota and our fish is stocked with uh northern northern pike. and walleye wow uh, bass and all of your little panfish and a bluegill will put up a fight you think you've got Really? Moby Dick on the, <laughs> on the end of your hook, and it's a little six-inch fish that says, I don't think so. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the only thing that I, um, I'll bait my own hook, and I don't think any boy should date a girl who won't bait her own hook. That's right. Uh, well, my son won't even bait his own hook. Oh, that's oh, wow. not good. He loves to fish, but yeah. he don't like baiting the hook, and he don't like taking the fish off the hook. Well, then he's going to have to use a He lure. likes reeling them in. That's about yeah. it. He <laughs> loves to do it. He wants to go every day. He's yeah. A, he'll stay out there for hours. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's a good time. I like fishing. Yeah. I do, too. They've got a crappie tournament going on in Springfield this weekend. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's at Springfield Lake? I believe so. That's yeah. something I've never done, crappie fish. Oh, that's a lot oh of fun. Oh, my gosh. It's really? good. Yeah. yeah. And always, it's good we eat. usually catfish is our main thing. Yeah. Now, and that's, I will not noodle. That, that hillbilly. Oh, I won't either. No, I'm not, I'm not, no, no, no. That no. seems ill-advised at best. Yeah. No, a yeah. fishing pole will be <laughs> yeah. used. Okay, there's muddy water, there's a log, you stick your hand no where way. nobody yeah. can see yeah. where it's going. No. <laughs> yeah. Hillbilly <laughs> hand fishing is right up there with being a proctologist. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just not doing it. I like my fingers <laughs> in my hand. <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, I better save that comment yeah. to myself. <laughs> we, are, we are live. The That's FFA right. might kick uh, us off. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Scott and Julie. <laughs> I've got a catfish story for you. All yeah. right. Well, my father, who's uh, deceased now, and his friend Bob Broughton, a friend of me and my brother John, they are they were and they still are practically professional bass fishermen. They Ooh. know every lure and yeah. every. So I went along with them, learned how they do the open reel and things. And so um, my brother Chuck is married to Linda Ulrich, and they live up on a lake, you know, up by Union. So uh, this last summer, uh, my mother's 85 now, and I thought, you know, I'm going to quit. I'm going to start fishing off the dock with her, with the bobber and the night crawler. So last year, she was fishing uh, with my nephew, Edward Bowlby, who's uh, one of the basketball players for Lincoln. And she caught this. No, she didn't catch it. She hooked this big catfish. Got it to the dock. Couldn't get it in. Got away. So uh, this year, she got another one. Hooked it. Got it to the dock. My big brother, or younger brother, Chuck, and my brother-in-law, Kent, they couldn't get it in, and it got away. So I said, you know what? I got to defend my mother's honor. I took the bobber off. I fished on the bottom with this night crawler, and I hooked this thing with the cheapest Zebro, Zebco. Zebco, uh, yeah. It took me 20 minutes to get this <laughs> thing in. We finally netted it, took the hook out, and threw it away. But it was a blast. Yeah. Just oh, reeling yeah. it in. Yeah. Yeah, it is fun. We went fishing one year with my mother, and here we are. We went and bought all these beautiful little lures and everything, and my mother's sitting in the boat with a piece of white bread in her lap. And she dips it in some water and starts rolling bread balls. I'm like, really? And she puts that on the hook, and she is pulling out fish right and left. And we are pulling out these little three-inch bluegill that you have to toss back in. <laughs> yeah. She outfished us with 
bread balls. Well, some yeah. sometimes balls. the simplest bait works the best. I'm you know, you, a lot I'm... of people use like corn, hot yeah. dogs. Yeah, mm-hmm. we always use stink bait. Now yeah. leeches are Which, really good to fish with, but that's the one. That's yeah. the one bait. Somebody else is going to have to put that on the hook for me because I'm yeah. not doing it. No. Yeah, I really don't we care for leeches. And I have to wear a glove or use a rag to get the fish off the hook, not because I'm freaked out by them, but because they're so slick. You know, I, yeah. just, I can't get my hand around them and get the, the fins down the way you're supposed to mm-hmm, without right. getting a handful of fins. So I use a rag, a but rag, I yeah. get it. Get now, have it. you ever been finned by a catfish? I have not. Because that really it hurts. hurts. I got it. those barbs with... I I guess it's poison because once that hits your, you know, they it just instant pain. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, they say the best way to get rid of that pain is rub that where they got you under their belly. Huh. And that, that slime will draw that, I the guess, poison venom. out, venom, the whatever venom it is. But it? man, it hurts. Toxin of some yeah. kind. Remember that? I've never heard that. When we were kids, we used to feel that bread everybody with dough ball. Yeah. Dough ball, yeah. We would, there was a place called the Deer Creek Pay Pond outside of Lincoln on 121 going to Pulaski. We'd ride our bikes out there, and we'd catch carp out there with the dough yeah. ball. Now, I was talking to uh, Darren Coffey. He's a, a firefighter here in town, and he bow hunts, and apparently he bow fishes. And mm. if I'm not mistaken, he said Lincoln Lakes has been invaded by the Asian carp. Really? And people will pay bow fisher to go and get these fish out of the out of their <coughs> lakes so i've never tried bow fishing i'd probably mm-hmm. shoot my foot and be stuck to the boat <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I know they used to to bow fish for uh gar out there but i didn't know the asian carp yeah asian carp apparently well, that would have to be somebody that put those in there because there's no yeah. there's, there's nothing no natural running, inlet natu- that goes yeah, so goes in there so somebody, i don't know how they got yeah, there and I, they say yeah. once once they're in, popular, they're in they're mm-hmm. in and well, and you could get some beautiful crappie out of Lincoln Lakes, yep. and I yes. don't know if their p- crappie population is very good anymore no. at all. Now, I, I kayak all the Salt Creek. This year, I've gone all the way from uh, Edward Madigan Park to the Sangamon River, and I haven't seen any Asian carp on Salt Creek, but if you get on the Sangamon River, it's crazy. It's like they look like a, a band of coyotes attacking you. They'll start yeah. jumping and yeah. hit you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The ugly looking fish. Well, you know, Illinois farmers need to figure out how to get all those out of there and turn them into fertilizer. And th- they're well, they're, they're a delicacy. I, people eat them. Uh, we were talking to a guy out of Springfield, and they call them, I think, like silver fish, too, or something like that. And there's a way to cook them, and it's a, I know over in Japan it's a delicacy, yeah. and it, it's coming over to here, too. So Anybody that figures out how to make money off of them, they'll be gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They'll fish those suckers yeah, out of there, and we won't will. ever have to worry about them again. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Well, Julie, uh, thanks for stopping in. Uh, well, thank you for talking fishing. <laughs> well, yeah, all anytime. This, you know, it is a sport, and Absolutely. you know, we'll talk about anything on this show. Well, good. Uh, once again, what is the number to contact you if they're interested in the the promotion you guys are running? Seven three two five zero one three. Okay, thanks. That's Julie King, the director of Independent Living Services here at Christian Village. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break, but before that, we have a uh, trivia question that Bobby V wants to throw out there to win a stuffed area, one large topping pizza. Okay, I've picked uh, one of the better athletes to, to play at Lincoln Community High School. He's a three-sport athlete, uh, one of the great running backs ever for uh, the football team. He was the point guard for the basketball team and also the shortstop for the baseball team. Three-sport athlete. Uh, he is also the head baseball coach at Lincoln Community High School, and he's an assistant uh, uh, football coach, and he goes up on the top of the booth uh, with Coach Cooper to uh, – call the uh the sets down to coach mcdonald on the field and uh, that should be a pretty easy question if you had a unique running style you couldn't take him down if you had him hit from the front he'd turn around and run backwards before you took him down yeah. wow uh if you have that answer phone in to 737-3791 uh i can um, I, we should have an answer while we're on break here because that is an easy one anybody that knows anything about lincoln sports or even lincoln in a whole right. uh, he is around the community so give us a call 737-3791 with that answer and we'll be back after these messages you're in the cheap seats 96.3 wlcnonline.com the experience jimmy hendrix Jeff number two, rock and roll show. <laughs> Welcome back. You're in the cheap seats. Scott Kirby along with 
Bob Verderber, the voice of the Lincoln Rail Splitters football team. We are at the newly remodeled and completely updated Christian Village here in Lincoln, and it's the only faith-based retirement community and is the area's leader for independent, assisted, and skilled senior living and health care services, including dementia care. The Christian Village provides quality, compassionate care and loving Christian environment, offering a wide array of living options for older adults, such as independent living, rehabilitation, skilled nursing, and memory care. The Christian Village located at 1507 7th Street in Lincoln. For a private consultation and tour of the campus, please phone CARA at 217-732-2189. The Christian Village in Lincoln, a community of compassion. Speaking of uh, football, Railers had a tough one last night at Landfear. Uh, you and uh, Coach Schweitzer had the call. Uh, give us your your uh, your outlook or your outtake on the game last night. We're going to have Coach Mack coming in here in the next 10 minutes or so, but uh, I figured we'd talk a little bit right now. Well, I was wired. It was a great start to the game. Uh, we scored first, uh, got off to that early 6-0 lead. Uh, we scored on a uh, one-yard uh, run by Wes White, got the handoff from quarterback uh, Austin Cruz at the 10-06 mark of the first quarter, and we let it 6-0. We mixed, missed the extra point and uh, jump off to that early lead, and you're feeling good right away. Yeah, and they did. Uh, right from the get-go, I think we started on our, about our own 29-yard line and just drove the drove the ball down the field uh, via run, via pass. Cruz, uh, he was almost Peyton Manning-like last night. I thought he had a, a really good first half, uh, you know, distributing the ball to several different receivers. That's true, and uh, he uh, he always keeps his composure out there. Even in the, in the bad whooping there in the first game against Jacksonville, he kept his cool mm -hmm. and then last night you know he had a lot of opportunities where you know we could have got off the rails but he was able to uh, show his leadership out there on the field uh, of course uh, uh, Lanford came back and scored and they took the lead 7-6 but uh, uh, later in that first quarter Cruz threw a 15 yard pass to Will Cook and Will Cook uh, showed some great leaping ability there he went up about 10 feet in the air to catch that pass and uh, he took it in for the touchdown from 15 yards out, and that gave us the lead 12-7. And then I thought it was a great decision by Coach McDonald going for that two-point conversion. And uh, then Cruz on, a, uh, on the pass to Wes White got the two-point conversion, and we took the lead back at the 326 mark of the first quarter, 14-7. So uh, you had good feelings there that w right. you know we were on a roll, we were controlling uh, the offense, and uh, we just had to find a way to stop Lanfear. Yeah, and then, you know, we talked a little bit off uh, off air. Uh, Lanfer had the number 44, Dedrick Mitchell. Dedrick Mitchell, Dedrick yeah. Dedrick Mitchell. 6'3", 258. And w first half, uh, he didn't really do much. He had a fumble, which Lincoln was able to recover. Uh, they came out second half, and their game plan was to give it to 44 and just let him Right. Pounded up the middle and just wore our kids down. And like we said off air, uh, he was the he kicked the extra point, and then the guy on the kickoff was uh, Derek Thompson. He was number seventy four, and he's uh, six four, two forty, and he's the left tackle. So most of those plays, uh, they ran uh, Dietrich Mitchell behind him, and you know that's a tough combo to stop. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Lanfer, they weren't a real big team. Uh, they had some speed, uh, but, you know, pounding up the middle, and then once we got, you know, eight, nine guys in the box, then they just get it outside with their speed with their quarterback, number 13. Uh, Can't uh, even think of his name. Thomas, right? uh, Caleb yeah. Thomas. And Coach to, uh, Schweitzer told me that actually the, the guy that was uh, uh, penciled in to start uh, got hurt, I believe, last baseball season. Really? And he was an even better quarterback, but uh, – that was enough. Number 13, Caleb Thomas, their quarterback. But anyway, uh, they came back, tied it, and then um, uh, we were able to uh, score. Uh, we tied it up. Let's see. Cruz in the two-point conversion, they tied it up 14-14. That was the end of the first quarter. Right. And then we went in halftime. They got the lead. They Well, they had another guy that would come in, Reggie Dickerson. He was only a sophomore. Yeah, number when, 33. Whenever they'd give Mitchell a break, mm -hmm. and he scored, and they had the lead at uh, half, 21-14. But later, uh, we were able to score in the third quarter. Uh, Cruz on a pass, 13-yard th pass to Keaton Letterly, and what a great ca oh, catch yeah. in the end zone. He was laid out all the way, and he was able to get his hands underneath it and make the catch uh, for uh, the um, uh, touchdown. And that got us within 28-20, and then uh, we handed the ball off to Sean Cannon. I thought Sean had a great game. He and did. He went in for the two-point conversion, and that closed the score to 28-22 for us. And then uh, 
after that, it just kind of went south. Uh, yeah, I th uh, we had a lot of kids play well last night. Sean Cannon, obviously Austin Cruz, Wes White had a huge game. Uh, Will Cook had a big receiving night. Yes, and, uh, yeah. You know, Cruz, I mean, he, he is a leader. You are talking about leading the team earlier, and I was on the sidelines, and then just their demeanor when they would come over, you know, they were still calm. They weren't pointing fingers. They didn't have their heads down. You know, they still played the game. But unfortunately, they just didn't have an answer, and they ran out of gas and couldn't stop Lanfer's offense. Yeah, we got a lot of guys going both ways, and it was pretty warm and humid. Uh, I think it was around 74 degrees at game time, and uh, yeah, that takes a toll on you, uh, on some of the guys going both ways. I noticed, I think we can ask Coach, I think uh, Eric Notto, he may have gone all the way. He wears the number 72, and he's the, uh, I believe, the right tackle. And I noticed some subbing guys in and out, but every time I looked out there, it seemed like Nato was there. Yeah. Well, uh, Bob, let's uh, let's take another quick commercial timeout. We'll get Coach Mac on with us, and uh, we'll get his take on the game last night. So stay tuned. You're in the cheap seats, 96.3 WLCNOnline.com. <laughs> 